Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could use Luminar to give you a vintage film look so you could go from an image that looks like this to an image that looks like this. The vintage film look I'm going to be showing you could be done in Luminar 3, Luminar Flux, and Luminar 2018. I suspect it also could be done in the original version of Luminar as well. I've just never tried it with that. Now, of course, all those versions of Luminar come with over 50 great filters, but there's not really a filter there that will give you that kind of vintage film look. And the look I'm talking about was... Uh, really in the 70s with the Kodak um, cartridge film cameras. You kind of got that washed out color kind of look. Very popular look still today, especially in street fashion. And you're going to find that it's relatively easy to do, even though Luminar doesn't have a specific filter for this effect. Now, it is a multi-step process, so you may want to take notes and when you do it, you may, when you're, when you're done doing it for the first time, you may want to create a preset for it that will save you a lot of time. Of course, I have my presets along the bottom here. And just a quick note, um, my presets are still on sale. They're normally 50 presets for $15. In the description below the video is a promo code so you could get the 50 presets for $10. Now I'm going to close down that bottom film strip by clicking right here to give us a little more room. Now I mentioned that this is kind of a 70s look. It's got kind of washed out color. So what we're going to do is add a number of filters to achieve this look. I'm going to go to add filter and um, I should add what you should do is process your image like so it's done. Basically this is a fully processed image right now but now I'm going to add this vintage look to it. So no matter what application you use, process your image to the point that it would be done normally. Now I'm happy, I happen to be using Luminar Flux right now. I processed this image in Lightroom and I sent it over to Luminar. I could do the same exact thing in Luminar 3. I could process the image completely in Luminar 3. Then when I'm at this point, add the following filters in the following order. Now the first filter is we want to get rid of some of the color. Uh, there, it's just, you know, as you know, in the 70s, these, this cartridge film wasn't that rich and vivid. So I'm going to go to saturation and vibrance, and I'm going to just bring saturation down to like minus 10 or 10 or so, and vibrance as well, minus 10 or so. That's it. Step number two is we're going to be adding a curves filter and it's down here in the professional section. So we're going to add the curves filter and there's a number of things we have to do in the curve filter and it's a little tricky. So uh, pay attention. What we're going to do is, as you know, there's um, the RGB channel, then there's red, green, and blue. We're going to start out with the RGB channel. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left side at the very far left and we're going to push that up. And we're going to push that up maybe about a quarter of a way up on this first box that you see here. Now on the right hand side, we're going to pull that down a little less, maybe uh, an eighth of the way down on that box there. Next, we're going to add a slight S curve to this curve. So we're going to go down here in the lower left quadrant. We're going to put a point there and just pull down a little bit. And we're going to go up here on the upper right quadrant at a point and push up a little bit. So we have this kind of gentle S curve, but we also move the very ends, the top, the bottom left end up a little bit and the top right end down a little bit. Next, we're going to jump over to the blue channel. And with the blue channel, we're going to do something similar. We're going to go to this uh, bottom left hand corner and we're going to push that up, not quite as far as we did the RGB channel and we're going to go to the top right hand corner and push that or pull that down about the same as we did the RGB channel. Now we're going to do an S curve here as well but we're going to do a, a gentler S curve like not quite as significant. 
as that last one we did. So just a tiny S curve right there. Finally, we're going to go to the red channel. And all we're going to do on the red channel is add a, add a slight S curve. So we're going to go to the lower left quadrant and just pull down a little bit and the upper right quadrant and push up a little bit. So we're getting there. You can see it's starting to get that kind of film look. Now what we're going to do is add split toning. So we're going to go to split toning and often in this look, the shadows are tinted a little bit blue or purplish and the highlights are a little bit yellow or orange. So we're going to do that here. And to do that, we're going to start out in the highlights and I'm just going to temporarily put saturation up relatively high. I'm going to move the hue to somewhere around 50. Around 50 is a yellowish orange. Then I'm going to take saturation and I'm going to bring that down to a more realistic level of around 10. 11 good. Then we're going to jump to shadows and I mentioned this is kind of a bluish purple or a purplish blue. We're going to take this and we're going to move it to around 250. That will give us that kind of purplish blue, somewhere around 250. 251 is good. Again, we'll take saturation to 10. Now we really, really do have that film look, don't we? All right. Now, often with film, we have grain. So we're going to add some grain. And we could just take the amount up. And you could do this to taste. You could have it real heavy grain, a lighter grain. You don't have to have any grain at all if you don't like grain. And you could just, you know, do it as you like. So move uh, amount, size, and roughness. Uh, to your liking. I kind of like that. Now, one thing you may want to do, we're really done right now, by the way, but one thing you may want to do is quite often the skin tones in this um, look were a little bit more washed out uh, than, um, than kind of is showing here. Sometimes, but not always. It depends, I guess, on the light. So you may want to add a highlight shadows uh, filter that's in the utility section and you just want to take highlights up a little bit and you can see how that's just adding a little brightness to her cheeks and if it's adding it to places you don't want you could use a brush so and just you know a, a, a filter mask with a brush to just put it where you want it but that's it now to finish it off we could add a vignette quite often these cameras would vignette a little bit and they'd usually vignette dark. So we'll add a darker vignette. Mess around with size and you can do this to taste too. No, you know, no uh, rules here. And there is our vintage look. There is before and there is after. There's before and there's after. Now again, Create a preset at this point if you'd like, uh, that way, um, or they call it look now. Create a look now. You could go down here into this uh, bottom right-hand corner and save Luminar look. You could call this uh, vintage film look. And click save. Now, you don't have to go through all this rigmarole again. You could just quickly add it through the preset. That's it. Very easy to do in either Luminar 3, Luminar Flux, as I did here, Luminar 2018, and I'm pretty sure you could do this in Luminar 2017 as well. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.